Imagine, imagine, you are all suit up at the New Delhi airport and ready to roam in Rome. Flight arrive on time and the pilot starts the trip after discussing the flight plan. And now you are about to reach the half distance and it turns out... Captain, Captain, there is an emergency. Passenger Naveen needs immediate medical attention. Captain, let's accelerate towards the destination aerodrome. No, we now have to return to New Delhi. But Captain, we are in the middle of the journey. We will reach the destination aerodrome at the same time. We haven't reached our critical point yet. What do you mean by critical point? Hello, pilots and future pilots. You are watching Pilot Preparation and today we will be starting with critical point. So critical point is also called as equi point time or point of equal time. So it is definitely nothing but a point for sure because it is critical point or equi point time or point of equal time. So I know it is a point. So it is a point along the track from which the flying time between the two selected bases will be the same. Two selected bases means departure aerodrome and the destination aerodrome. So New Delhi is my departure aerodrome and my destination aerodrome is Rome. So I can say that uh, these are the two selected bases for getting my critical point. But there could be any other aerodrome as well. Now here also, here also, in here, 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 here and here. There could be many other aerodrome, but we don't consider them when we calculate or when we try to find out the critical point, it is taken with respect to the departure and the destination aerodrome or the destination basis. So we have only two bases to uh, get the critical point. And what, is, what does it do? It is a point from where if you go to the departure point or the destination point, the time taken will be the same. So just imagine if this is my critical point. Then if I go to this point, that is departure aerodrome, that is T1, or if I go to the destination aerodrome, that is T2, then T1 should be equal to T2. This is nothing but the critical point. As this is a critical point, then the T1 should be equal to T2. So what it is, it is a point along the track from which the flying time between the two selected bases will be exactly same. Now that we have understood what it means, we should also know why we are using it at the first place. So actually we don't use it for fun, but it is used in the case of emergency. E-M-E-R-G-E-N-C-Y. So it is used in the case of emergency, emergency such as engine failure. If there's an engine failure or engine breakdown, then you have only one engine left or if there's a four engine aircraft, then only three engine is left. So what we do, we try to land the plane as soon as possible. We land the plane to the nearest aerodrome usually. And in the case of uh, critical point, we calculate uh, whether we should go to the departure aerodrome or to the destination aerodrome. So if you are starting from A and if you're going to B and if this is a critical point, then if you are, if you are here or if you are here, then you should go back to the departure aerodrome. But if you are here, then you should go, go to the destination aerodrome. And if you are at the center, then you can go to the either side. So usually you, you will go to the destination aerodrome because that is your destination where you wanted to go. So why we are doing this? To land as soon as possible because there's an engine failure and we have to check our plane and it could be risky to just fly on. So that is the reason we want to land as soon as possible. What is the other condition when we need to land as soon as possible? The other condition is, again, the heart attack thing. If a passenger is facing heart attack or if there's some, you know, some acute issue or a chronic issue which goes out of hand uh, in the case of passenger and the passenger needs urgent medical treatment or just imagine if there's a pregnancy and uh, the baby is about to be born, something like that. So the plane needs to be landed as soon as possible. So for that case, we need critical point already calculated so that we can land our plane as soon as possible. Now that we are done with the understanding of why we want critical point, we should also learn how to get critical point. So finding equipoint time in different conditions. So there are a lot of conditions in air, right? So to understand the, those conditions, I have taken an analogy which you know from the 10th standard. That is nothing but the riverboat problem. River 
बोर्ड प्रॉब्लम और एनोलॉजी वी कैन से सो एनोलॉजी सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट सो वॉट आई एम सींग हियर इज इन द केस ऑफ आइडियल कंडीशन इफ इफ आई से आइडियल कंडीशन वॉट वुड बी द आइडियल कंडीशन देर इज नो फ्लो ऑफ विंड वुड बी द आइडियल कंडीशन सो इफ देर इज नो विंड देन हाउ द प्लेन विल गो एंड वेर द क्रिटिकल पॉइंट विल बी विल चेक दैट सो बिफोर दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस एनोलॉजी एज इफ देर इज अ रिवर बट द रिवर इज ब्लॉक फ्रॉम बोथ द साइड देन इट विल बिकम अ पॉन्ड करेक्ट इफ इट इज ब्लॉक फ्रॉम बोथ द साइड देन इट बिकम्स अ पॉन्ड and what happens inside the pond is something the same thing will happen with the case of plane also because there is no wind at all there is no external interference to the plane so whatever is the plane speed it will go in that speed itself it will go in this direction or it will go in this direction with that same speed so if i talk about this plane this is the center c is nothing but the center so what i know if i keep this plane at the center whatever whenever i will be trying to find out the critical point i will always keep the object at the center so if i keep my plane at the center what i know is this distance is d and this distance is also d this is same because it is at the center right now what about the speed if the plane goes in this side or if the plane choose to go back in this side the speed can be same just imagine that my engine speed or my plane speed that is also called as true air speed is 300 knots so this will also be 300 knots both will be 300 knots and if the speed is same and the distance distance is also same so the time taken to go to outbound outbound means out of station that is nothing but this side so this is outbound so outbound time is to and home bound on time that means if you are going back it is called as home bound time so, so this is nothing but th so in that case we can say t out bound is equal to t home bound so by this understanding what i can say my critical point is exactly at the center isn't this interesting now let us summarize till here so first point is already you know from the definition that point of equal time will always be on track irrespective of the wind direction second is critical point lies in the middle of the stations when there are no winds so if there is no wind at all then the critical point will always lie at the center so that is the second very important point again these are all all these points are always bgca points whatever whatever i have written after you know as a summary you have to remember everything or you can note down everything then the third is critical point is independent of fuel in an aircraft that means as we were discussing about the critical point we didn't talk about fuel at all because we always assume whenever we are going by the plane we we don't worry about the fuel or the fuel shortage because we have already done the flight plan and we have already calculated the payload so we know how much fuel is required and as per that we have uh, managed to get our trip fuel plus reserve fuel so we assume that we have enough fuel that is the reason we don't care about the fuel when we are calculating the critical point now let's take a different case if the wind interfere which is usually the case usually almost all the time the case is that there is wind interference from any direction but there will be wind interference so what happens in the case of wind interference so if there is a tail wind tail wind means uh, you have seen animal tails it is at the back always at the back so what i can say tail is nothing but back wind if the wind is coming from the back the plane will be pushed forward correct so what happens uh in the case of plane and what happens in the case of boat is very simple they get extra energy to move forward so in the case of river boat problem analogy if you have heard in the case of river boat problem we talk about downstream what is downstream downstream is nothing but when the flow of the stream and the flow of the boat is in same direction it is called downstream and downstream is nothing but similar to tailwind so what i can say the flow of the river is also in uh, right direction and the flow of the boat is also in the right direction so if both are going in the dire uh, right direction so from the center if boat want to go back if the boat wants to go back home so the home speed will be how much the home speed will be 
टेन माइनस थ्री वाई टेन माइनस थ्री बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग अगेंस्ट द रिवर फ्लो सो इट विल बी रियली लिटिल हार्डर सो इट विल बी टेन माइनस थ्री इट विल बी सेवन के एम पी एच वेर एज इफ यू गो आउट ऑफ स्टेशन दैट मीन्स इफ यू आर गोइंग डायरेक्टली टूवर्ड्स बी दैट इज द आउट बाउंड दैट इज आउट बाउंड स्टेशन और you know you are going out from your home so it is called as out of station or outbound station so outbound station is nothing but 10 plus 3 why 10 plus 3 because the uh, boat speed is also in this direction and the river is also going in this direction so they both will add up so it will be 10 plus 3 that is 13 km per hour same exactly same thing happen in the case of aeroplane as well so if the plane is going like this if the plane was here and it goes like this and then it comes to the center so why i'm taking from the center because it will be easy for you to understand from the center because in the case of center our distance is constant from to both the direction our distance become constant from the center d and r distance is same but the speed in this case is not same so let's talk about that now so if the plane is kept at the center let's see whether the uh, whether the critical point comes again at the center or not so this is my distance d and this is again my distance d correct both are d because you are at the center then we talk about outbound speed if you are going towards the destination your speed will be 330 plus 20 because again it is a tailwind so it will help you to go in this direction tailwind is nothing but this direction wind from d to r the wind is flowing so what i can say it is it is outbound and it is 330 plus 20 so it is 350 knots whereas if you go back from the center then what will happen you are going back home so it is home bound speed is nothing but 330 minus 20 so it is 310 knots so you have at one place 300 310 knot speed and another place you have 300 350 knot speed so what i can say time is equal to time outbound is equal to distance by speed speed is 350 350 and here the time home bound will be distance by 310 so you can clearly see this 350 is bigger than 310 that means time this is bigger and this time will be lesser that means time outbound will be lesser than time home bound so it will be time home bound will be more than time outbound we can say in this way that means time taken to go back home will be more compared to time taken to go outbound so can i say this time my center point or my critical point is at the center i cannot say that because critical point is the point from where you can go to home or the destination and you will reach at same time but here there is a not the same time so what we should do we should try to do it same so what i will do if i keep my critical point at this point if i keep my critical point ahead what will happen again i will moved i will be thrown in at this side very easily because my uh, my winds are also tail wind so if the wind is tail wind what will happen it will push me very fast and i will reach more early to r and i will reach more late to the d so if i am going back to delhi i will take more time compared to from the center so that means this is not the correct way i should do it so what i should do i should keep my critical point near the departure it should be between the center and the departure of course closer to the center but near to the departure so if i keep my center uh, critical point here then it is fine because now it will take approximately equal time or exactly equal time to go in both the di direction so my critical point will be near to the departure station and it will be away from the destination station this type of question does come in exam so make sure that you have a note of it winds are coming at an angle this time so again this that is this is a tail wind but it is coming at an angle it is not coming from the back directly it is coming at an angle how to deal with this type of you know wind component so again as i am talking about wind component i have already given you a hint of something called as vector so you know in vector what we do 
we have just imagine if we have two force that is F1 and F2. What what does this two force mean? This two force mean that if we take a resultant of these two force, the box will move in this direction and the box will move in this direction. And eventually it will move in this direction. And this direction, if we take uh, this point here, we can say that they are exactly the same thing. That means instead of making, if instead of pushing the box like F1 and F2, we can directly push the box like this and it will still go in this direction. Correct? So this is the case, this is the, you know, this is the phenomena or this is the beauty of vector in which we get F1 and F2 as two component of F. So F has two components that is vertical component, vertical component and another is horizontal component. So similarly, we can break any uh, anything into two components, any force or any velocity into two components that is vertical and horizontal component. Similarly, if we take, you know, if we take uh, this wind, which is coming at an angle, again, I can take this like this. If this wind is coming at an angle, what I can do, I can take this up and I can put this here. I can put this here uh, for my understanding. And then what I can do, I can make two components. So one component is vertical component. So it will put, it will be done, uh, it will be going downwards like this. And another is horizontal component, it is like this. So what I can say, this velocity V is, you know, having two components that is V1 and V2. Now, what about V1? V1 is nothing but acting like a tailwind because this V1 is moving, will help the plane to move forward. So V1 will add to the speed of the plane. But if the wind speed is 20 knot, will this V1 be 20 equal to 20 knots? No, it cannot be 20 knots because we are breaking the V component. This is 20 knots. But when we break the component, as we have studied already, as you might already be knowing that it will be less than 20. So we can assume this as 10 knots for now. For now, it depends on the angle of the wind. So anyway, this is 10 knots for us. And this V2 is also 10 knots. So what we know that my outbound speed will be how much? My outbound speed, that means from the center. Again, if I take it from the center, what I can talk about? I can say from the center, I have this tailwind. That means wind is from left to right. Wind is moving from left to right for me. So I can clear. And this vertical component is of no use to add or subtract to the wind. It is vertical component, right? So what I can say, my homebound, my outbound speed will be 330 plus 10. So it will be 340 knots. And my homebound speed will be 330 minus 10. So my homebound speed will be 320 knots, correct? My homebound and outbound speed are done. So again, I can see that my outbound speed is 340 and my homebound speed is 320. As my outbound speed is more or it is very high compared to my homebound speed, what I can say, the critical point will not be at the center again. The critical point will not be at the center. Can I keep my critical point again to this direction, this point? If I keep my critical point here, then because the speed is 340 in this direction, I will reach to the destination very early compared to the departure. Again, the same thing will happen. So where should I keep my critical point? I should keep it behind the center. That means I should keep it near the departure. So my critical point will be somewhere here. This is my critical point. Now let's talk about the vertical component. How does this affect the plane? This vertical component is pushing the plane downward. So will the plane not move downward? Yes, actually, this vertical plane is uh, pushing the plane downward. And there is another component of speed that is the plane speed. That plane speed can be called x, which is in this direction, which is in uh, the direction of r, right? So it is in this direction. So the plane displacement will happen like this. The plane will also displace in this format. That means if this is my plane, it will it will start from here like this, and then it will go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So to keep my plane on track, what I should do, I should take my plane speed and change that plane speed angle. Just imagine if the plane speed is like the plane is going in this direction, 
if i change the uh, plane's nose and if i keep it in this direction because the plane's magnitude the speed is too high the plane speed is too high compared to the wind speed what will happen if i keep it at a slight angle also at a slight angle maybe of 4 degree or 6 degree or 7 degree or 7 degree what will happen my resultant will shift from here to here so it will come again on track so what i am actually saying i am asking you to tilt the plane towards the wind this is also called as plane crabbing towards the wind because like a crab move sideward right similarly our plane will also move little sideward so we will tilt our plane in such a way that our resultant this time comes like the plane speed is this direction and our uh, wind speed is this direction so our resultant comes out to be this direction that means our plane will move our plane will move like this continuously in this direction and when if you want to go from r to d or from you know if you want to go from rome to delhi again then what you will do you will again switch your plane's direction and you will go like this because again you have to face this vertical force right to counter that vertical uh, vertical force which is pushing you downward you have to change the nose angle so that you can put the resultant again on track and move forward so this is how we tackle with the vertical component of the wind so if the wind is coming from this direction what we can say the winds are port drift p o r t drift and to counter that port drift we are crabbing into the winds and the nose of the plane is going towards the starboard side the side but the drift of the wind is uh, nothing but port drift it is not starboard drift it is port drift because wind is coming in this direction so this is it about this part head wind as the name suggests is nothing but the wind coming and hitting the nose of the aircraft or the face or the head of the aircraft directly so head winds are the winds which hits the head of the aircraft we can say in this way so what we can say in the case of river boat problem if we take the analogy again if we take the analogy it is nothing but the case of upstream in the upstream what happens the water the river is flowing in this direction and the boat is going in this direction if the boat and river is in opposite direction what will happen the person looking from the ground will see that uh, the speed of the boat has reduced if it is going in this direction so our outbound station speed has reduced from 10 to 10 minus 3 that is 7 km per hour whereas if you go back to your home so as the river is also going back to your home so what will happen the boat both the speeds will add up so it will be 10 plus c uh, so it will be 10 plus 3 that is 13 km per hour so by the logic again what i can say time is equal to distance by speed if my speed increases what happens time decreases that means this time we are reaching to the departure aerodrome earlier compared to the destination aerodrome same thing happen in the case of plane as well so if we are getting head wind so it will be 330 minus 20 it will be 310 knots whereas this is outbound speed and homebound speed will be nothing but 330 plus 20 it will be 350 knots so what will happen if you go back to your uh, de departure aerodrome you will reach very early whereas you will reach late on this region so you can definitely not had have, have cp at the center correct so should i keep my cp at this point if i keep my cp near to departure this time what will happen if i keep this cp near to departure already my speed is too high compared to the uh, other side that is destination aerodrome so i will reach more early and i will reach on the destination more late so my critical point cannot be here the critical point has to be after the center it will be behind the center or we can say it should be closer to the destination aerodrome so the critical point will be at this place so by all these three example what we can learn is wherever the speed is less 
if the homebound speed is less or outbound speed is less whatever is less the critical point will be where the speed is less that means the critical point is here in this case from the center it is towards the departure aerodrome in this case also it was towards the departure aerodrome and here the speed is less in this side which is you know outbound station so here what we can say the cp is heading closer towards the destination aerodrome so this is how we can analyze this thing now let's focus at these two points this is the first point and second point this usually comes in dgc exams so let's see them one by one first point is if headwind or tailwind increases critical point deviation from the center will so uh, whether it will increase or decrease what do you think so what i know al already is if there is no headwind or tailwind if there is still air what will happen if there is still air my critical point will be at the center but if there is little headwind or little tailwind what will happen my critical point will shift to the left or right from the center and that will be little shift correct but if there is a lot of headwind or lot of tailwind what will happen then the critical point will shift a lot so what i can say if there is a increase in headwind or tailwind i can directly say that critical point deviation from the center this is the center right it will increase now let's look into the second point if the true air speed increases what is true air speed this aircraft speed that is 330 knots this is nothing but the true air speed this boat speed at 10 km per hour is the true boat speed we can say so this is nothing but true air speed and this is constant in both the direction so whether the plane is going outbound or the plane is going homebound that is having the speed of 330 knots and then we add the component of wind that is 20 knots uh, headwind so we will say 330 minus 20 or 330 Plus twenty, and then we'll say three fifty knots and three hundred and ten knots. So this is the true air speed, and this true air speed is not the final speed. What is the final speed? Final speed is the outbound speed and the homebound speed, which is nothing but ground speed. Okay, so ground speed is actual may the final speed. So what happens if the true air speed increases? The critical point deviation from the center will. So if the true air speed increases, that means the magnitude of the plane's velocity is increasing if the magnitude of plane's velocity is very much increasing and the air uh, the what we say the headwind or the tailwind is still the same what will happen the headwind or the tailwind's component will not be able to affect the plane a lot because this time the plane is more powerful the engines are more uh, producing more thrust so what i can say if the magnitude of the plane increases then the effect of the wind then the effect of the the effect of the wind will decrease and if the effect of the wind decreases i know that critical point will tend to move towards the center so what i can say if the tas increases the critical point deviation from the center will decrease that means if the magnitude of the plane speed increases the critical point deviation from the center decreases now these two things you can even calculate and get the answers which i am getting right now with the formula of time is equal to distance by speed but you know that will be a long process there we don't have a lot of time in exams so that is the reason i am giving you a short answer now let's move into the winds at an angle again and this time the headwind is coming at an angle so what i know this is the headwind component and this headwind component is broken into two parts that is w1 and w2 so again what is happening here the headwind is coming but at an angle it is coming so what i can say this is my headwind and if i take the vertical component the vertical component will look like this and the horizontal component will look like this now my horizontal component will tend to decrease my plane speed because the plane is moving in this direction right the plane is moving in this direction so it will act like it is going against the nose so it is nothing but headwind so what i can say when my plane is at the center and if i want to go outbound from here what i can say if i want to go outbound 
the wind speed uh, or the plane's ground speed outbound will be nothing but 330 minus 20. So it will be 310 knots. Or sorry, it will not be 20 knots. Na? It will, the component is broken. So this is 20 knots. But this is broken into two parts. So I'm assuming it does not need to be 10 knots. But I'm assuming it to be 10 knots. And this also has 10 knots. For now, let's assume it like this again. So this is 330. And 330 minus 10 will be 320 knots. And my homebound speed will be how much? Homebound speed will be 330 plus 20. So it will be 350 knot. You can see there's a good difference. And we know which component is bigger. The headwind component is bigger. That means my critical point will clearly lie here. Somewhere after the center. So after the center, that means the critical point will be closer to the destination aerodrome. Now this is the first part of the uh, story. What is the second part of the story? The second part of the story is this component, the vertical part of this component will try to push the plane downward. I have already, I have already given you the answer for that. You just need to change the angle of the plane like this. Once you change the angle of the plane like this, what will happen? The magnitude of the plane will, you know, if there's a vertical component, that will be balanced by the angular component of the plane and the resultant component or the resultant displacement of the plane will be in this direction. Now I think you all are ready to solve the mystery which we discussed in the starting point that when, uh, like can you figure out the reason for not landing in Rome? So you, your plane was going from New Delhi to Rome but when you reached the center, you had some emergency and because of that, you chose to go back to New Delhi. But why you chose to go back to New Delhi or why the play, pilot chose to go back to New Delhi, there must be some issue. What must be that issue? The critical point must be in front of the plane. That means the critical point must be ahead. If the critical point is ahead, what will happen? You will choose to go back to the departure aerodrome. That is the case which must have happened. Correct? So this must have happened. And what type of wind and what type of wind is responsible for this scenario? Headwind is responsible for this type of scenario. So there must be some headwind. Because of this, the plane chose to go back because that will be closer to reach. Now let's talk about the last scenario that is nothing but beam winds. Beam winds are the winds which are perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the aircraft. So if the aircraft is going horizontal, the winds will be perpendicular or vertical, right? So this is what is happening in this case uh, of the beam wind scenario. So what is happening? The winds are coming like this and the aircraft is moving like this. It is making a cross sign and that is nothing but beam winds clearly. So what, what will this type of wind do? We already know this type of wind tend to push the aircraft downward like this. Or if the winds are coming from down to up, then the aircraft will move like this, right? And it will lose its track clearly. So what we should do? We should rotate the aircraft like this into the wind. And that's what we do. And with the help of this, our aircraft continuously move from D to C and then C to R. What if we are going from uh, R to D? Then what, will, what we will do? We will do like this. We'll go like this. This can be our angle. So in either case, if you're going like this or if you're going like this, in both the cases, we can we always dive into the wind. The nose always go into the wind. This is very much clear. Correct or not? Now what I know, I have a vertical wind component like this. But my plane is not aligned in vertical direction. It is aligned in this direction, right? So what I will do, I will make a Cartesian coordinate like this. So if I make the Cartesian coordinate like this, then what I know, one component will be hanging like this and another component will be hanging like this, correct? And whatever is the speed of, uh, whatever is the speed of the wind, that will be broken into two components. So one component will be hitting the plane, this, this red component, or we can, you know, drag this and keep it here. So one component of the wind will be hitting the plane like this. So it is actually reducing the speed of the plane. And another component is pushing the plane downwards. Whereas this downward uh, push will not be working because the plane is already nose up. 
So it will be regulating and the plane's displacement will be in the direction of the track for that reason. So we have managed, we have managed with this uh, right, right component, but the left component is still decreasing the speed of the aircraft. So just imagine if the speed of the wind is 20 knots and we can assume again for our understanding, I'm taking this as 10 knots. So what I can say, because of this uh, beam winds, my speed has reduced in this direction. That means my outbound speed has reduced by 10 knots. That is 320 knots is my outbound speed. And my homebound speed will also be reduced in the similar way. Because again, the homebound speed will also be facing this thing like this. So my homebound speed will also be facing this thing. So what I can say about this, that it will be equally facing the same thing. So in my homebound speed also, what I can say, my speed will decrease to 320 knots. So this clearly shows that my critical point will be at the center. Why? Because the distance is same and the speed is also same. So time is also distance by speed. So time taken to go to departure or destination will be same. So my critical point will be at the center. That means the beam wind effect on the distance to CP, there is no effect. It is having nil effect. That means the beam wind does not affect the critical point's position. But what about the beam wind's effect on the time to CP? Yes, the time to CP is affected. Why? Because we are decreasing the speed. Earlier we were moving by 330 knot. Now you are moving towards CP by 320 knots. So your speed has reduced because of which the time will increase to reach to CP. So TCP, so TCP has increased. So clearly what we can say, there is effect on the time taken to reach CP, but there is no effect to distance to CP. Now, now we can locate the critical point, whether the critical point is at the center or it is near to the departure aerodrome or it is near to the destination aerodrome. But what if I tell you that you can get exact value of where the critical point is located by one or two formula, which, which can be easily derived. So let's derive the critical point formula. To derive the critical point formula, what we need? We need two bases. So one is departure aerodrome, that is A, and destination aerodrome, that is B. This is my A and this is my B. And I need one critical point also. So I will assume my critical point to be here. This is my critical point. And then what I can assume this total distance to be D. And this distance, which is distance to critical point, that is X or DCP. So for my understanding, I'm writing it X for now. And then later on, we'll change it into DCP. And then other than this, what all we have? We have one outbound speed. When you go from CP to B, you have an outbound speed, which can be a reduced speed. Why? Because at critical, a critical point, your engine can fail. And we will assume that just imagine if your engine fail, then what will be your outbound speed and what will be your homebound speed? That is something which we calculate. And that is the reason this outbound speed is usually different from, from the speed you had earlier with the four engines. When all four, four engines are working, we directly call it ground speed. So when you're going from A or the departure point towards CP, all four engines are working. So that is the reason we are saying, we, we are saying it as ground speed. Whereas this is called as outbound speed. This outbound speed could have reduced speed because of one engine failure. Similarly, if you're going from CP to A, then your speed will be H. That will be nothing but homebound speed, correct? And again, it will be at, and again, this could be a reduced speed or three engine speed or two or single engine speed, whatever, because there would be an engine failure again. So let me summarize the scenario. When you started your journey, you had all your four engines working. So you reached from A to CP. And after reaching critical point, you realize that your engine has broken. And because of that broken engine, now you're thinking whether you should go back to A or whether you should go back to B. If you go back to A, your speed will be H. And if you go back to B, your speed will be O. And you'll be reaching on at equal time as this is the critical point. Or we can say it is equipoint time. Because of that reason, we can say that you will reach both the stations at equal time. So let's now write the same thing. So what I know, time taken from CP to A is nothing but distance by speed. Distance is X and speed is, speed is uh, H. And time taken from CP to B, that is nothing but 
Distance speed again. So that will be d minus x by o because this is x. This region is x. And we want to find out this. This will be d minus x. Correct? So this will be d minus x by o. So what I know, this point and this point is same. The time taken to both the places are same. So 1 is equal to 2. So what I can say, my x is x by h is equal to d minus x by o. That means x o is equal to d h d h minus x h. Correct? So what I can say that my x or x is what? x is nothing but d c p. So my distance to c p is nothing but d h by o plus h. This formula is highly important and you can remember it that distance to c p, distance to reach c p is nothing but d h by o plus h. Where, where h and o are could be the radio speed of the aircraft. It doesn't not always need to be the radio speed because just imagine if the passenger is facing heart attack, then your speed will not be reduced. So in that case, we'll be having uh, this replaced with the ground speed in almost all the cases. Now let's talk about the time taken to reach CP. So time taken to reach CP is nothing but distance to CP by ground speed. So this is my time taken to reach CP. Isn't this simple? Now let's look into questions. These are very easy questions and we learned about winds coming at an angle. So you must be thinking at that time that we have to calculate the ground speed with the help of trigonometry that uh, v sin theta, v, v cos theta. Actually, you can do that also, but it is very easy to calculate in this way. So usually in exams or usually in all the questions, you'll be given the track on which the plane is flying. And then you'll be given true airspeed of the plane. And you'll be given the wind's direction and, and wind speed. And wind speed. So you'll be given track, true airspeed, and wind direction and wind speed. So how to find out the ground speed by all these given data? It is very, very simple. You just need to open your CX3. If you don't have CX3, then go online and just write CX3 calculator and you'll get that CX3 there itself. And in that, you go to wind correction. It will be little down and then you click on that and then you write the track. Track is nothing but true code. True course is 090. And then we have TAS. TAS is 145. So I will write 145. Then what is my wind direction and wind speed? So wind direction is 335. And wind speed is 18. So this will be 18. Now if I enter, I will get the ground speed as 151.69. So I can directly say this ground speed is nothing but 152 knots. Wasn't this easy? Now let us solve a demo question. Why am I calling this as a demo question? Because this is an easy question. This may come in exam, but usually it doesn't come in exam. So this is a demo question. And if you want a lots and lots of questions in the second part, so wait for the second part until I get 400 likes on this video because I'm really very much assuming that I will get at least at least 400 likes. Why not? Because why not? Because this is free and I hope you all are enjoying this. So I'm expecting nothing but 400 likes if possible. You can share with your, your friends for this. Now in this question you are given the total distance of the track. The total distance of the track from A that is departure and B that is destination. The total distance is given as 1300 nautical mile. Now imagine your CP to be here. Just imagine. So what is happening here? Your track is 090. Track is 090 means when you're going from A to CP or CP to B, your track in this direction is 090. That means if you're going from CP to A, what will be your track? Will it be 090? No, it will be 090 plus 180. That will be 270 in this direction. Your track will become 270 when you are going opposite direction. Now, your task that is true air speed at 4 engine with 4 engine is 200 knots. And when your engine failure thing happened, your, engine, uh, your speed became, your speed reduced to 150 knots. So earlier it was 200 knots, then it became 150 knots. And then it is giving us the information about the wind that is wind direction that is 090 or 90 degree. And the speed of the wind that is 20 knots. So we have to find the distance to CP and time taken to reach to CP. So before that, 
we already know the formula of distance to CP that is dH by O plus H. So we need to find O and H to find DCP, right? To find that, what I need to do is the rule is nothing but we will call this animal not as a pig. This is not a pig anymore for us. This is a HOG hog. Hog is nothing but a, this animal which looks like a pig. I don't know whether both the creatures are same or not. You can tell me in the comment section. So for now, what I'm saying is this is a hog and this is a hog rider. You might have seen in Clash, Clash of Clan or Clash Royal. You might have seen this guy. This is a hog rider. In this way, you can remember this HOG. Once you remember this HOG, everything is very easy. You just need to type here H, O and G. H is nothing but homebound speed. O is nothing but outbound speed. And G is nothing but ground speed when all the four engines are working. Okay. So I have this homebound speed, outbound speed and ground speed. Homebound speed is taken from CP to A. And outbound speed is taken from CP to B. And ground speed is taken from A to CP. So I will write it like this so that you can understand it better. So we are given track. Track is also known as true course. So this true course is given. And then what all is given? Task is given. And we are given with wind. Wind or we can say W by V. That is given. By all this, we already have seen that we can find out the ground speed. So I can find out the ground speed here. So the, in the first case, what I can do? I will write the true code. So if you are going from CP to A, CP to A, it will be 270. In this case, CP to B, CP to B is nothing but 090. So it will be 090. And A to CP will also be 090. So this is done. Then we have TAS. TAS is nothing but 200 knots. No, it is not 200 knots because the speed is reduced. Just imagine if the case of emergency occurs. That means your speed has reduced. So what I will say, your speed will be taken as reduced speed here. So it will be 150 knots. And O CP to B, CP to B, B will be also 150 knots. But A to CP will not be 150 knots. Why? Because you, you started your journey and you have all the engines working at that time. So you will write here 200 knots. And then what about W by B? Will it change? W by B will be constant because winds are coming at a constant direction and with the same speed. So it will be 90 by 20, 90 by 20, 90 by 20. And then what, what is the value of ground speed coming? So let's solve that now. So I am given with true course. True course is 270. Then I am given with the TAS that is 150150. And then I have wind direction to be 90 and wind speed to be 20 knots. My value comes out to be 170 knots. So my ground speed is 170 knots. Similarly, I can find out the outbound speed that comes out to be 130 knots. And my ground speed from A to CP comes out to be 180 knots. So in this way, we can solve all the three ground speed. And now we can easily get the answer because we know DCP is nothing but DH by O plus H. We already know H, we already know O and we are already given with the total distance that is 1300 nautical miles. So I will write 1300 into H. H is 170 by O is how much? O is 130 plus 170. So it comes out to be 736 nautical mile and my time taken to reach CP is nothing but a distance by speed. So DCP by speed. So DCP is 736 by speed, ground speed we are talking about because till then our engine has not broken. So my speed will be 180 knot. So it comes out to be 4 hour 5 minute 33 second. So this is my correct answer. I hope you enjoyed this video and sorry for a little tired face. I'm actually shooting this in the morning and I haven't slept. So that's the issue. And please like this video, please share with all your friends and subscribe to get more and more videos like this. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग एंड ऑल्सो वी ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड ग्राउंड क्लासेज इन ऑल द सेक्शन सो प्लीज अप्रोच एस फॉर ग्राउंड क्लासेज और फ्री काउंसलिंग एंड फ्री डेमो क्लासेस सो यू कैन ज्वाइन एस एज पर योर कन्वीनियंस